By the end of this video, you'll understand variance and covariance so well, you'll be explaining it to your friends. Hi, I'm Joanna, a senior data scientist, and this might be the simplest way I've found to wrap my head around the concepts of variance and covariance in statistics. If I would ask you to guess my height, which would be your best guess? There is an abundance of possibilities given by all factors known and unknown which determine the height of a person, from genetics to race, nutrition or sports played during the childhood years. My height could be anywhere between the shortest woman and the tallest woman on earth. The different ways these factors combine make us different. That is where variability in the data comes from custom configurations of known and unknown factors. If we know which are those factors impacting our height, we say that that part of the variability in height is explained by what we know. The rest is left unexplained. Noise, random variation or information not accounted for. To answer my question, you might sample some data from your environment like ask your female friends, mother, cousins, their height. Say they range between 158 and 179 centimeters. So is the average height the best guess for my height, for the height of this new data sample? If values were concentrated around 164, you would be confident in the prediction, but with all this variability, not so much. One measure that quantifies this variability is called variance, and it measures how dispersed is the data around the average. Let's have a quick look at the formula. The numerator compares each of our observed heights to the average height of our female group. Then it takes the sum of these differences. Let's leave it like this for the time being and I'll explain the details later. Now let's check the denominator. n is the number of samples, 20 in our case. By subtracting 1 from n we are making sure that our sample has at least two heights. With only one height collected it would become impossible to calculate a mean or a variance. There is no dispersion in one number and n minus 1 is also called degrees of freedom. Let's focus on the numerator. First, calculate the difference between each height and the average height. Wouldn't it be enough for a variability measure to just sum up all these distances? Not really, because all differences above the mean would be positive and those below the mean would be negative, cancelling each other out. So why not just use the norm and making all values positive then? By squaring, each difference is amplified. This has one big advantage. It heavily weights the more extreme points and it helps in identifying outliers. Variance will always be positive. It allows the formulation of other metrics that derive from it, like for example the standard deviation, which is nothing else but a unit of length like kilometers or miles, but for measuring the distance from the mean inside the distribution. So my height of 173 centimeters would be in the right tail of this distribution, 2.5 standard deviations away from the mean. The covariance is an extension of the variance as co means joint. Covariance can only mean the common variance, but common between what and why should we care about it? Common or joint implies the existence of at least two parties involved, two variables in our case. Assume that you're becoming increasingly worried that your company is discriminating people based on their height. You want to check that assumption that's why you extend your data set and also collect salary data. The same way different factors influence a person's height, 
there is a plethora of factors determining how much someone earns the activity field the level of education the market's need for certain skills and other unknowns so there is variability in both of our variables height and salary but if your hypothesis were true and there is a linear relationship between salary and height some part of the previously unexplained variance in salary would be explained by the height the two variables would have some variance in common that is the covariance and it measures the linear relationship between two variables we calculate the covariance to check how two characteristics co-vary or vary together does the salary increase with a person's height so short female earn less and tall females earn more or are tall female discriminated against so the taller a female is the less she earns or is there no discrimination at all and there is no linear relationship between height and salary so there are short female with both high and low salaries and tall females with high and low salaries let's see how to translate all this in mathematics starting from the formula for variance this time we will have to calculate two averages one for each variable one for x and one for y where x is our height and y is our salary let's use a scatter plot to display the data collected the height and salary pairs for each woman in the sample and then add the two averages on the plot think about their intersection as the average female of the sample we want to check how each of our women performs in both height and salary relatively to the average person there are four possible situations when a person performs above the average in both height and salary when the person performs below the average in both height and salary when a person performs above the average in salary but below the average in height or when the person performs below the average in salary and above the average in height for the first female the recorded height is above the average as we can see here on this plot the person's height is around here and then the average is below what we've recorded so the person's height minus the average height is going to be some positive number so this is going to be the difference between xi where i is one because this is our first person and the average height now let's go and check the second variable the person's salary this difference is also going to be a positive number because the salary of our person is greater than the average salary so this person performs better both in terms of height and salary compared to the average person so adding up these two differences which are a positive number and then another positive number is going to return a positive number besides being positive the value itself is the area of the rectangle defined by the average person and the ith person we move on to the next female of our sample compare it to the average person and now we see that the salary is higher our person's salary is around here so it is higher than the average salary but the height of the person is lower than the average height the value is again an area but this time the value of this area is going to be a negative number because here in the formula we are going to plug in first some negative number for the height which is below the average and then some positive number for the salary which is above the average 
So negative times positive is going to return a negative number. We continue doing this for every point and we notice we have four quadrants. And the off diagonal consists only of positive values. The off diagonal is indicated by the green points. So with respect to the average, either both variables are above or both variables are below the average. The diagonal quadrants only consist of negative values. So here only one variable is above the average, while the other one is below the average. But we don't really care which one is which. Imagine four kids pulling from a plastic hoop the green team and the red team. In order for the hoop to change its shape from circle to an oval, one team has to be stronger than the other. If all kids are equally strong, the hoop will keep its round shape. So back to our plot, we think that each kid is one quadrant. The force with which each kid pulls the hoop is the sum of the areas in that quadrant. In this first scenario, there is no winning team. The forces are equally distributed across the four quadrants. The points are randomly scattered around the average. There are short women with both below and above the average salaries, as well as tall women with salaries below and above the average. We can imagine that summing up all the rectangles would cancel out almost entirely, making the covariance equal to zero. Could you imagine when is the covariance positive? When the green team is stronger, pulling the plastic hoop to their advantage. If the sum of all positive rectangle areas is larger than the sum of all negative rectangle areas. So there is more scatter on the off diagonal indicating that the two variables vary together or move together. The salary of the female in our company increases with the height. The taller the woman is, the more she earns. This is equivalent to the shorter the woman, the less she earns. Could you imagine when is the covariance negative? When there is more scatter on the diagonal indicating a decreasing trend, we are looking at a negative covariance. This translates to the taller the woman, the lower the salary, or equivalently, the shorter the woman, the higher the salary. Stop at this scenario, so we proved there is some discrimination happening. The covariance is negative, so we know which is the favored group. But how strong is the relationship? Covariance can take on values between minus infinity and plus infinity, and it is also sensitive to outliers. So we will use covariance to only assess the direction of a linear relationship, so either a positive relationship or a negative relationship. And instead, in order to assess the strength of that linear relationship between x and y, we are going to standardize the covariance. By dividing the covariance to the product between the standard deviation of x and y, the values are, sc are scaled between minus 1 and 1. And this new measure is called correlation. If we wish to label the strength of the association between x and y, we could use this standard mapping of the correlation coefficients. Besides, do not forget these values can also be either positive or negative. Positive correlation means that the variables move in the same direction, both x and y increase or decrease. Or negative correlation means that the variables move in opposite directions, um, x increases and y decreases, or vice versa. Now, let's sum up everything that we've learned. So, while the variance measures the dispersion within one variable, covariance shows us how two variables move together, in a positive direction or in a negative direction. 
the variance is always going to be positive, while covariance can be either positive or negative, indicative of the relationship direction between x and y. Variance ranges between 0 and infinity due to the fact that we square all the distances to the mean, while the covariance can range between minus to plus infinity. The more interpretable alternatives to variance is the standard deviation, which indicates the distance from the mean inside a distribution, and the interpretable alternative for covariance is the correlation, which takes values between minus 1 and 1 because it is a standardized version of the covariance. Okay guys, so that was it about variance and covariance. Drop me a comment to let me know if this explanation made sense for you and maybe share it with a friend who needs to hear it or explain it yourself because I'm almost sure now you could do it. Don't forget to subscribe for more applied data science content. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye!